Hello and welcome, dear friends of Estral Travel. Here are the Matrixes with Jonathan and the Sheva. Welcome to our new video. Today it's about an anti-propaganda video on the subject of astral travel. There is a lot of talk about the dangers of astral travel exists and why you shouldn't do any of this. Of course, there is also an agenda behind it so that you don't astral travel learn. Maybe you won't lose the fear of death and yourself at all generally does not deal with expanding consciousness. We want to clear up these things a little today. Yes, there are many stories about astral travel. I also always, or we always have emails got what it said. Yes, astral travel. Is it good? Is it dangerous? What can happen there? Will the demons be waiting for me when I leave my body? Or maybe I can't go back into my body. And there are all such stories. And with these stories, we want to do a lot in this video cleanup. Exactly. We have made a clever list with all the points and... any doubts you have. And I would say, let's go through them one by one. Yes, let's do that. Point number one, astral travel can only be done by highly spiritual people and adepts. Yes, I've been asked that often, and I've done it every now and then. I read again somewhere on the internet that astral travel is just is reserved for those who are already very, very advanced. Yes, it's nonsense. So I had my first out-of-body experience when I was 19 because I wanted to know what is astral travel. I laid down and did it. I wasn't highly spiritual. I was naturally interested in spiritual things interested, but shit, it worked. I was out of my body, therefore no. Yes, especially since everyone travels astrally every night. That's what happens. Every night, every person travels astrally. Also, maybe your neighbor who doesn't bother with you at all. I'm busy with astral travel and don't even believe in it yet. Travel astrally at night and independently of your everyday self. Have his experiences. Have his experiences. And why is it so important that we leave our body at night? consciously or unconsciously, because our body needs energy and our astral body collects it, his physical journeys or astral journeys at night, the energy which the body then has available so that you can do it again the next day, you can get up and go about your everyday life. So it is actually essential that we really are astral every night travel. Yes, if your astral body didn't absorb energy, you would wake up in the morning and can't move at all. It does not work, zero. And then you stay there in your bed until your astral body is recharged. That's why you have to get away from your body for at least a minute every night, solve. And this also happens to every person in order to provide themselves with energy to charge. Point number two, demons are waiting for you once you are astral. No, never met one, never. Yes, I've encountered demons, but only when I met them too have been looking for. This means that once I have detached myself from my body, I am actually always alone in the bedroom. Always. There's no demon or some strange creature or anything. It can happen that there is a visitor there. Another astral traveler who just said, Hey, Jonathan, nice that let's meet on the astral plane. Well, whether he remembers it the next morning or not is one another question. But it does happen sometimes. But I would say 99% of all the experiences I've had have been me always all alone in the bedroom. I used to be extremely afraid of demons, extreme. So when I closed my eyes as soon as it got dark, I got really scared of demons. I still dared to have astral travel and have one again and again made astral travel. 
And despite the fact that I believe that when I go astrally, I wait demons on me, there was one of them. So don't worry, this is just so you don't learn to travel astrally. Yes, because if you, for example, detach yourself from your astral body, within the resolution process, it may be that your fear energy, something like that, might be created in the solution process. That means you can hear a little voice saying, do this not. Or if you come out, I'll get you. It can happen sometimes, but as soon as you are out of your body, it is everything gone. The fear is gone, and there is no one there either. It's mostly you yourself, a projection of yourself. Yes, don't let it bother you if something like that comes up. I've only experienced this two or three times or so. That I heard strange things during the detachment process or unpleasant things. But just ignore it. Keep your cool. Move on. Don't let it irritate. Exactly. Point number three. If you eat meat or smoke or drink, you can't trigger astral travel. Well, I actually used to wear the exact opposite experience, and I've heard from others too. I've also met a lot of people who do astral travel and they smoke, they smoke weed, they eat meat and whatnot all day long, I know, drinking alcohol and so on. Nevertheless, astral travel has, so it's also a rumor. Just a rumor. In the end, it all comes down to will anyway. Okay, next point. Once you're out of the astral body, you can't find your way back. Has this ever happened to us? We're still here. It's rather the opposite of that. You have an out-of-body experience, and then you're back faster than you actually wanted to. This was often the case for me in the beginning when I detached myself from my body head. I'm like, horny, I did it. I'm in mine now, astral body. What is my body doing right now? Pop back. All you have to think about is your body bang. Yes, I just have to think about my body and boom, you're back again. And that's why it's rather the other way around. So I haven't heard of anyone yet out of body experience has been too long. Next point, if you cut the silver cord, are you dead? So I've never seen a silver cord before. Couldn't cut through it either. Sure, I used to read all the stories in forums before X years, but I've never seen anyone cut through them and then didn't come back. Yes, I was in contact with Paul Tolley at the time, who is actually him. The most famous German lucid dreamers were in Germany too, was in sleep laboratories, where they then proved that he can actually dream lucidly, has also sent messages about the eyes while he was sleeping and all that kind of stuff. Paul Tolley was very well known, and I often spoke to him back then. Yes, had contact. We also exchanged a lot, and he told me, or I think he published it once, that he grabbed the silver cord and broke it. Yes, yes, and what happened? He still wrote anyway. Yeah, right. He woke up normally again. Yes, he did that often. And yes, so no. The silver cord, I personally assume, is actually one psychological help, like Hansel and Gretel with the bread cake. Yes, exactly. Kind of like that, because if I'm really scared, I'm lost now. Can I see where my silver line goes, and then I'll fly it after? Just like in the maze, you might spin a thread, or one carries woolen thread behind him. Yes, silver cord. Myth. I don't know, well, I felt them before, and I, I also led to the back and felt them too. But which one's actual reality and function is assigned to it? Everything is still something uncertain. So I think it's more of a psychological help. For those who are afraid that they might get lost could, or which symbolically represents 
Here your astral body is tied to your physical body. And now you don't die if the silver cord breaks or the like, or you can even tear them up. Next question. Once you're out of your body, can beings occupy your body? What do you think? No, you are with your body and your astral body is, yes, bound together with the same signature. Nobody can get in there. Beings can attach themselves or they can your thoughts manipulate. That's called occupying. And then suddenly there's another... The soul has to agree with this per se, and that is called channeling. Yes, so when you detach from your body, you detach, so to speak, your dream self or your dream personality. This passes into the astral body. It is always your everyday self in the body. It's always there. And it also occupies your body, i.e., yourself, your everyday self. And if you change the astral body, then that is just yours astral ego. You have a consciousness that can be divided into different ones, parts of consciousness. And one, as you say, the astral ego always remains there. There are also beings who can live in a hundred different places to be conscious at the same time and still still in place. And Job so we have so many different options with our consciousness. You don't have to worry about that. So also a myth. Next point, when I travel to other worlds, they hold me there and I cannot back. If only on a voluntary basis, just because you have decided that you want to stay there, you can't be forced. Yes, you can't be forced out of it, right? You may be asked, would you like to stay here? And if you then say yes, you may not be able to go back. That's right. And the temptations can be very great. Yes, in some worlds it is. They look so exciting and fascinating that you then say yes quite carelessly without even really looking what's going on there anyway. And then you have to stay there for millions of years. So it's also a myth, as I said. You just have to look at your body, think, and then you're back quicker than you actually wanted. Next question. Do I need an astral screen or protective shield so that I can be seen? Doesn't attack. Actually, the question is superfluous because you are astral. You have an energetic body, and in that sense, immortal. You can't break it or cut it. Yes, no one can do physical violence to you in no way because you are astral. You are actually dead in quotes at that moment. Temporarily dead, you could say. And energetic attacks, yes. So every person has a natural one protective shield. And this natural protective shield also protects you from everyone energetic attacks. Of course, if you do a lot of drug abuse, so I mean with now not consciousness, expanding drugs, but a lot abuse drugs or drink a lot of alcohol and so on, it may be that this natural protective shield is weakened and then it is possible that you are responsible for energetic attacks, you are predestined. Primarily, of course, in the form of manipulation and energy extraction from you. So they can't hurt you, neither physically nor astrally, but they things like taking energy away from you or making things easier for you. Instill thoughts and you think they are your own thoughts. The ones that just don't do you any good. So people don't drink alcohol. It's better for you in every sense. Not too much. So the dose is always the point. If it's a glass of wine or a glass of beer, okay. 
Even if you get drunk, that's okay too. But of course, if you're drunk every day, then it will be critical. I even see a problem doing this every week. Therefore, if you have any concerns, you can do so before any out-of-body experience. Also build an energetic protective shield. Just to be safe, an additional protective shield, you can do that too. Because some people are just worried about it, and who is like that? If you have doubts or are worried, you should have an additional one generate. Protective shield. Imagine, visualize. Next question. If I'm astral and someone wakes me up, then you can die. Oh, yeah. Then you're dead as a mouse. Mouse dead. Never happened. Nope. Anyway, so that's also one of those myths that exist about astral travel gives. When you're nice and relaxed and floating around on the astral plane and suddenly the dog jumps into your lap. Your partner pushes you in bed. Yeah, or your kid or your partner comes in and says, hey, get up, it's eight o'clock. So don't worry, nothing can happen. This is one of the biggest myths, I would say. Next point, it is unnatural to travel astrally. If it were natural, anyone could do it. I think we kind of already have that with the first question answered that you have to do it for energetic reasons, it happens. Automatically, every night, anyone can do it too. Astral travel is accurate, natural, because it happens every night. Anyone who isn't an extra. And what's not natural is that you don't remember it. For that. This is the point that is not natural because the body, all the biological functions also include functions that enable this nocturnal replacement to absorb energy include. And for this reason it is natural. The next myth is that after an out of body experience you are totally as exhausted and it's the case that you haven't actually slept at all has. I've often heard people say that when I do it at night, if I'm traveling in the astral body, then I'm awake in the astral body. Did my body sleep enough or did it have enough rest? This is a difference between being awake and being conscious. You are conscious in the astral body, but your body that is sleeping. So after astral travel, we always feel so energized. However, yes, so the opposite is actually the case. That is, when you astrally travel at night and you come from your experience back, you will feel an energy, wow. It really has it all. And the further away you were, even with the mental body, you'll feel even more energized. You're like a little fidget girl. No, but really charged. Yes, so it's also a myth. Next question, can you end up in the wrong body after astral travel, something like suddenly being in the wrong body at 30 o'clock overnight? Or what are these films called that suddenly swap bodies like that? Yes, where then the daughter is the mother and the mother is the daughter suddenly or something. It's a similar question to being co-occupied. Yes, it's a similar question. And same answer, actually, that's not possible. That doesn't mean it's completely impossible. But if it is, then it is only with consent. Well, both souls have to agree, right? Both souls have to agree. This is the case with the topic of walk-ins, for example. Exactly. With walk-ins, that's why there is this walk-in agreement, because you can't, can just get into someone else's body. So that means if a person is in a coma and says to themselves, no, I no longer have any desire for life on earth, for this incarnation, then maybe a soul comes along and says, you, me, I don't feel like being born as a baby or anything like that, would like to have your body. Am I allowed to do that? And if he says, yes, of course, you can have it. Gifted? It's a gift. Then the walk-in goes in there. Hence a myth. Also a myth. Next question. It takes years to learn astral travel. Complete myth. As I said, I simply planned my first out-of-body experience. 
I'm doing an out-of-body experience. I listen to a frequency. Boom, it happened to me outside within three minutes. And I had never practiced or had any experience with astral travel busy, read a bit. Then I thought, give it a try. So no, yes. Anyone who wants to astral travel must have a strong will. So that's it. You have to want it. Yes, you have to want that. That's the main thing. When I started training astral travel, there was no such thing. No books with exercises in them or anything like that. Or barely. Nope, there wasn't. So I didn't even know, yes, there is definitely a technology to do this, to learn astral travel, but I didn't know any. I went to the bookstore. There wasn't one at the time internet. You shouldn't forget that at this point. I couldn't just Google here, Matrixa astral travel technology or something. It wasn't possible there. That means you had to go to the library and then see if there was one book about astral travel is offered somewhere. And you had to leaf through the book and see if there was anything there. There is a technology in it. And that wasn't the case in my library. And I also lived in a big city, so that was now not small. So books about astral travel were in short supply at the time. I just had to think about something myself and try it out myself. And then after three weeks of practice, I managed to, to consciously detach from my body and experience an out-of-body experience. So with Shiva, it happened on the first night. It's amazing that it happened like that on the first night. It was even a nap and the sun was shining and everything was loud outside. So it has to want to. So you see, you don't have to train for years or be an adept bee or be enlightened or live ascetically or something like that. No, you can have your first out-of-body experience tonight or your 322nd. The problem is actually just the mind telling you to do it. I, can I do that? Actually, it's just your head that plays along. If you could display it, you would be astral anyway. Actually, you just have to work with your head. Or not working. So by working in the sense of convincing him of it. Work mindlessly? Headless sounds strange too. Yes, we'd rather not do that. We're not in the 16th century century. Next question. It is impossible to meet others astrally because of astral travel only is a vivid dream. No, 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 no. Well, I've seen people standing by my bed with them on, pulled me around. I've stood by people's beds and pulled on them, and hundreds have confirmed to me that I stood there, the me have seen. I alone. You stood by me and pulled me out once, so when I saw you. So see, Astrali, if someone is there, I can see immediately. And I saw that he was there. He also tried to pull on me. I think you were even able to pull me out. Yes, yes, you did. Exactly. So, yes, astral travel, there is a certain objectivity to it added, i.e. an objective reality. So you can meet astrally, you can arrange to meet, and if so, both are trained to remember well, then they can tell. each other what they have experienced with many people matches. We also did astral travel together, did symbolos together, pulled people out, all sorts of things. So sure. So it's not just a vivid subjective dream that only exists in the reality of the individual exists. So it's not like that. Myth exposed. Yes, also a myth. Next question, next question. If someone Austral comes to visit me, will they see me naked? Yes, I was often asked that at my workshops. If you come to my bedroom tonight or hotel room or something, do I have to put on makeup? Or do I have to wear something nice? Or will you see me in my nightdress? I don't know. We don't know each other that well now. I don't know if I'm comfortable with that, so I've listened to all of that stuff and also heard it, and no, that's not the case either. 
I'm not saying it can't happen. It can happen that you stand there naked, but it's very rare. So I've never stood there naked, astrally. Sometimes you can wear what you went to bed with is, is sometimes the case. But usually you wear what you wore the day before or the favorite clothes. You wear them often too. What do you always wear? To be honest, I never paid attention to it. I didn't feel like it important. Oh, right, yes. So you don't have to worry about that either. Besides, everyone always looks a little prettier astral, right? Well, I saw you in your clothes. Oh, right. Well, with me, but with you or others, but completely normal ones, clothes. So I haven't seen you naked astrally either. You always had clothes on. Yes, yes, I hope so. So as a rule, you always have clothes on, yes. Always some kind of clothing, usually from the day before or just that favorite clothes, what you like to wear the most, most often. And rarely actually what you have on when you go to bed went. Or when you were born. So I haven't seen any naked ones yet, no. No, me neither. Okay, next question. If someone pulls me out of my body astrally, that's very unhealthy and can cause energetic or medical problems cause. Oh, we wrote that down? I don't even remember that. I wouldn't even know how to answer that because it's completely out of the question my reality is. So it's also a myth, definitely. Someone once said that on the internet when you meet someone from, if you pull your body out, then you will damage the energy table and the like, is complete nonsense. You will often be contacted by your mentor, i.e. spirit guide or spirit helper or guardian angel or whatever you want to call him, sometimes taken out of your body at night, which then travels with you goes. It's been like that for me several times too. And even if someone pulls at you, just think about it. If I could harm anyone that I don't like, no, then I'll leave at night, go to, no, I don't know, Bill Gates or something, and go to it. And pull it out of the body and say, huh, now he has one energetic damage. No. So it's damaged, but now. Afterwards, they say it was me. No, it's also a myth. Yes, it's simply a belief system. It's also like this. I don't want so and so to do energy work on me because then it makes my energy feel bad, everything nonsense. That's your belief that pulls the energy down, not them other person. If you think you have a strong energy field, how can you can mess around with it? That's just because you think he can do it. So neither energetically nor physically. Well, there are already some healers who... They can also harm you if they want. Absolutely, of course it works. But of course it also depends on your inner consent together and with your belief system, what you have to do with it. So don't worry. Pulling someone out of your body is normal. We did this a lot as children, but most of you probably won't remember it. Myth exposed. Next question. When I go into sleep paralysis for my planned astral journey, then I can be stuck in it forever. Shit, that's what I thought as a kid. Until adolescence. I always found sleep paralysis really terrible. Yes, me too as a child. Then you woke up at night and wanted to move. And I always thought, I'll stay there forever. I'll never get out of there again. And then I put in the greatest effort possible to torture myself out of there again. As a child, you don't know that yet. Yes, completely wasted energy. Yes, completely. Because you only have to wait 30 seconds. And then you get out of it. Get out of your sleep paralysis again. And it was the same for me as a child. When I woke up at night and found myself in the paralysis of sleep, I also panicked as a child. Then I thought, shit, I'm paralyzed. I can't work anymore. Yes, exactly. Oh God, what is this now? And then I tried everything possible to finally get myself back to be able to move. And after 30 seconds, I was able to move again. Anyway, yes. And then of course I thought I can move because I, I tried so hard. 
Yes, exactly. True. Correct. That was it. That was the gag about it. So when I wake up in shock these days, I think, yes, great, Australian trip, let's go. It's like the pigeon. With the pigeon? Yes, they locked a pigeon in a box like that and given her food every minute on a timer, so for grain, for picking. And at some point the dove started flapping its wings and afterwards it was found that the flapping of the wings was associated with the... Minute correlated, that is, the dove believed when she... If she flaps her wings, she gets a grain, so it's not true. No, no, no. Sleep rigidity is also a natural biological process. The body goes in to stand by so that the astral body can release itself, can charge. And of course, if you wake up too early, that is, the astral body is not yet 100% reconnected with the physical body, then you catch yourself in a state of sleep paralysis and many people then panic. Yes, of course, logical. But it's natural and happens every night, every night. So the next time you find yourself in a state of sleep paralysis, rejoice because then you are so close to an out-of-body experience. And then you can just use a technique like floating up drop. Roll out. Roll out, put everything on. So rejoice next time. Next question. Can someone else or someone stranger visit me astrally and themselves then turn into my partner to trick me into having sex? Well, yeah, maybe that's not quite such a myth. Yes, not quite such a myth. Yes, I've experienced it too. Yes, I've got that too. Yes, that someone has changed, but you can feel it somewhere. Yes, you can feel it, yes. So most of the time you feel it and think there's something wrong with my partner funny. Yes, exactly. There's something wrong with that. As soon as you have a bit of doubt, you have to point your finger at him, show and say, show me your true form. And then he has to transform. Or just say, go away. Anyway, it works. Yes, then maybe they think, yes, maybe my partner is later insulted because I sent him away. Oh, right, yes. Or so. So, okay, if you think that, then say, stop, show a truth shape, exactly. So then, if in doubt, you could point the finger at him and him order to show his true form. He then has to show it, yes. But it has already happened, yes. I also know people who told me about it, yes. They come at night, turn into your partner, and want you then hook up with you. But you said that very well. That was pretty funny, right? Nope. Okay, now that wasn't quite such a myth. Yes, it's not that big of a myth, no. Next question. Does astral travel make you sick, physical or psychological? No, actually quite the opposite. Actually completely the opposite. If you would consciously always travel astrally, you could too always healing, recharging on the contrary. Yes, that is also a myth. Fully. Yes, quick question. Next question. There is no such thing as astral travel. They are just dreams or fantasies. You already answered that earlier. It is an objective reality. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to go to other planets together, for example, being able to travel or anything else. And we can tell us together the next day, this and that happened. Yes, exactly, this and that happened. Yes, so take a look at, for example, I don't know, gehirnkicker.de. I think we listed reviews of the seminars there. Look at how many people have confirmed all of this, that, what do I know, we stood by their bed at night, astrally, and who saw us? Or even at your workshops back then, you always have one place in the seminar room at night struck astrally. And of course, all the participants could confirm this. Yes, I saw you. Yes, I saw you. Something like that. So it's not subjective, no fantasy. When you meet the other and the other is yours, the next morning confirmed. And it may be that you are in different realities lands. Yes, that can be true, of course. Of course that can be the case. So that means you go on a date with your friend Astral and he is waiting for you in reality 27 and you are in reality 15. 
You both wanted to meet at the Eiffel Tower, but in different realities. Yes, of course, it's a matter of practice. Of course, this can often happen. That's what convinced most people. Yes, I arranged to meet my boyfriend tonight, and he did experience completely different things than I experienced with him. Yes, because he was in two different realities. The same as with yes, if traveling to Australia is really possible, then lay I put something on my table tonight. You come to me and tell me what is it. Just the reality shift or the frequency shift does. Sometimes it's just difficult to say what's there. For whoever puts it down, it's a pencil, and you get there, and then you see. For you, it's a ballpoint pen. Simply because it is a different reality, therefore, because there is one frequency shift exists. So that means you have to be there with your friend or your partner. Really train yourself to be in real reality hits, and of course, training is necessary. It's not that easy that you both fit in right away, meet the same reality. That just needs to be tweaked. Otherwise, as I said, the astral world is an objective, existent one reality that is real in itself and also has its own continuity. Has just like everyday life. Last question. Last one already. Yes. Okay. You can only travel astrally if you are full of love, and our Satanists just can't do astral travel. So first, show me someone who is full of love, and complete. No, unfortunately, that is also a myth. Anyone can travel astrally, and everyone does it every night, whether the person worships the devil or worships God or Buddha worships. Or it is an atheist. Or it is an atheist. Exactly. No matter what religion you belong to, the astral world is yes, differentiated, not as strong in good and evil as we might see here on the Earth. Do. Because the higher you go in the astral planes, the less dualism can also be found, and that also explains that anyone can travel astrally because it is a natural right to travel astrally. For each, and just because he somehow has a screw loose, that still means it's not a long shot that he's no longer allowed to travel astrally. There is no court there either. That then says, yes, look here, he's tattooing three sixes on himself, his arm. So he is no longer allowed to travel astrally. No, it is not. Anyone can travel astrally, regardless of religion, attitude, and so on. Further. The only problem is the settings that ensure that he doesn't remember it or doesn't believe it at all. But everyone does astral travel. Yes, dear ones. What already over? Already over, or do you still have a myth? Can you think of one? Not spontaneous to me right now. No, not at the moment. No, but there were already a few. You can also write your myth questions in the comments. Of course, if we manage to do so, we will always answer them all. Comments might take a day or two. Anyway, if you have any questions or a myth, write it down. Comments, and we'll be happy to take a look. Yes, you are welcome to do so. And in this context, we look forward to your comments. Maybe you can think of a few more.